As the first museum in the country and the second oldest scientific institution in the country, we have an incredibly proud history of scientific research. And more recently, we've been involved in some flagship projects and those are things like the koala genome. Like all scientific research these days, it's collaborative. We have some very important partners on that project to make it a consortium. Ourselves at the Australian Museum, the University of the Sunshine Coast, the University of New South Wales and the University of Sydney. And those are all key partners that want something complementary but different from that project and it's very exciting. The Australian Museum is really interested in the conservation applications of the koala genome, particularly how does it help us inform population diversity. With increasing urbanisation, koalas are subject to habitat loss. They have threats like uh, being hit by cars or attacked by dogs. They, um, sometimes their habitat is separated by roads, for example, or, or development. As a consequence, it's very important to understand the genetic diversity of koalas and how do we maintain that into the future so we have a healthy population from a genetic perspective. The type of research that we do at the Australian Museum is typically in our fields of expertise, which are biology and genetics. As part of that, we do a lot of genomics work and we are in the position to generate huge amounts of data, to handle those data, and how do we share those data with our collaborators. So storage is important, um, moving those data around is very important to us, and anything that assists us in accessing those services is invaluable because they're typically not the type of infrastructure that we would create here on site especially. Uh, it's much more effective for us to be able to, to leverage existing technologies, existing services that have created things that are very easy for biologists like us to use. The Koala Genome Consortium is comprised of many different collaborators, which does involve moving data between groups. Some of them are overseas, and so being able to transfer those data very quickly and, and effectively with the sharing of a link has improved the way that we can do our analysis incredibly. As part of the koala genome, we really are most interested in conserving koalas. And the incredible genome technology that is available now has allowed us brand new insights into population diversity with thousands of markers. Looking at the immune gene diversity of koalas, which is of course very important because they are susceptible to a lot of diseases. Understanding where um, the DNA may have been interrupted with, with a retrovirus. All of these things involve big genome sequencing handling of big data and access to high-speed computing and uh, that would not have been possible without some of the really amazing broadband connections that we have and, and access to things like the cloud services analysis. What's next for the Koala Genome Project? There are so many exciting advances being made with the ability to sequence entire genomes. So it's now not uncommon for an entire endangered species genome to be sequenced, every single individual in the population, so that you can make the best decisions from a genetic perspective for conservation. Ultimately, that's why we're doing this project. We, we want to conserve an animal that is incredibly important to every single Australian. And in fact, probably anyone that's visited Australia will have fallen in love with a koala. The future of the Koala Genome Project is that we would like these data to be available to all researchers to build upon, to advance what is going to be relevant in their research, to compare them to other species, and ultimately to improve conservation in general.